At one of the space mines where prisoners are forced to work, a crushing machine breaks down. The only person who can fix it is a former pilot named Kay. The man is allowed to repair it. At that moment, a new prisoner is brought to the mine, causing one of the convicts to attack a guard, for which he is immediately sent to the crushing machine. The newly arrived prisoner signals, and the convicts attack the guards. A fight ensues while Kay tries to turn off the crushing machine, but his chain gets caught in the drum, pulling him towards the sharp blades. Then, picking up a weapon dropped by a guard, he shoots off his own leg, reaches the control panel, stops the machine, and loses consciousness. Kay regains consciousness in the cabin of a ship where a cybernetic prosthesis is being made for him. Tobias claims to be a friend of his father, removes the iron gag from Kay's face, and finally, he gets a chance to speak. Hatch is determined to win the war, and for that, he needs information located on a ship leaving tomorrow. Kay must help him obtain these secret details. Moreover, Kay's father has been captured and is about to be executed, so as soon as Kay retrieves the information, Hatch will take him and they will go to rescue his father. As a farewell, Hatch informs the name of the ship, Arrowhead, and wishes the pilot good luck. Later, Kay finds himself on the ship and coming out of cryosleep, immediately contacts Hatch, then enters the system and copies the secret data. At that moment, Hatch reports that a storm is starting, so he asks to send the obtained information to ensure it's not lost. Kay presses the send button and the connection immediately disappears, interrupting the transmission and the ship begins to automatically jettison capsules with sleeping crew members. A minute later, Hatch's shuttle flies away, leaving Kay on the crashing ship. Later, he is awakened by the voice of the ship's AI, Reef, warning that the air outside is dangerous and advising finding an alternative oxygen source. At that moment, Oleander contacts him, asking Kay to hurry to the crash site so they can pick him up in a rescue capsule. Kay sets off, but again finds himself at his own rescue capsule. There, he hears a knock from another surviving capsule and pulls out a living girl, not noticing someone dragging a dead body into a nearby cave. Soon, the girl regains consciousness and realizes that Kay is not a registered passenger on their ship. She easily passes identification and the AI recognizes her as the biologist, Terran. She urges him to find the ship quickly because the capsules will soon fly away according to protocol. Kay sends a message to Hatch that the data is safe and catches up with the girl who explains that they are not on a planet. But on its moon. Suddenly, they come across a research probe, which puzzles Terran, as it looks like it's been lying there for 50 years, though it was launched only four hours ago. Finally, they see the fallen shuttle, but Kay notices an unusual stone near it. Suddenly, he realizes that he is unlikely to be rescued. The biologist confirms that Hatch has attacked them before, so they don't like his minions. Kay returns to his module, where AI shows the interrogation of Hatch, where he can confesses, among many crimes, to sabotaging scientific expeditions engaged in creating a new prison. At that moment, another message about evacuation from the planet in 30 minutes comes in. Kay catches up with Terran, shedding his uniform, but the capsules fly away without waiting for them. In despair, the girl waves at the fleeing capsules and doesn't notice as Kay disappears into one of the caves. She manages to grab his hand, but something strong pulls him inside, picking up the remaining personal wrist computer of the man. The girl returns to the module, but there is very little oxygen left. Suddenly, Kay's wrist computer activates, and Terran goes to the site of his disappearance, finding Kay's body, but with two intact legs. The girl carries him back to the module, where it turns out that he is immune to the toxicity of the air. Soon, Kay regains consciousness. He doesn't understand what happened to him, but he feels great. Terran hypothesizes that they are not alone on the planet, and the pair head to the previously noticed stone, inside which they find Oleander's body and carry it to the module. Kay insists on trying to catch up with Hatch's shuttle, deciding to leave Oleander here as if they take an extra person. They definitely won't have enough air. While the pair argue, Oleander regains consciousness and in his delirium begs to find and destroy a certain heart. Then, he grabs a weapon. Kay tries to take it away. A shot sounds. Kay screams in despair, and someone's terrible roar echoes in response. Terran 
dies for an unknown reason. The next moment, Kay's body begins to contort in a fit of unbearable pain, and he loses consciousness. In the morning, he wakes up on the sand and finds only the sun-bleached bones of Oleander and Terran. Kay returns to the ship, where the AI informs him that he has been off the ship for 34 days, and there are 42 days left until his release from prison confinement. And when Kay was not there, Oleander, who died a few days ago, approached the shuttle. Then, Kay begins to explore the planet and finds a cave with human footprints leading into it. But the man does not dare to enter. He collects spare parts from the crashed capsules and upgrades the AI while watching old cartoons to distract himself from what's happening. But one night, Kay wakes up to strange sounds outside, and then his body begins to undergo mutations, which the AI records and asks Kay to leave because he is putting the shuttle at risk. Kay runs outside, where he again hears someone's roar and then sees a terrible monster. But after running away from the monster, he suddenly begins to mutate into a similar creature. In the morning, the man comes to his senses on the sand. He returns to the shuttle, not understanding what is happening to him, and asks the AI to cut the parasite out of him. In despair, he convinces himself that he must repair this module by the day of his release. But then, the AI reminds him that they already celebrated that day two days ago. Not understanding, the man goes outside and falls to the ground. Three years later. Kay undergoes constant mutations. His body more often turns into an unknown creature, and a clear decrease in IQ is observed. One day, Kay runs outside. Although the AI reminds him that he should not violate the regime, the man runs through the unknown planet at night for no reason and sees countless fireflies rising above the surface. But then, Kay's IQ stabilizes. He realizes that running through an unknown planet populated by monsters at night <laughs> is a bad idea, and returns to the shuttle. Nearby the shuttle, Kay notices human footprints, and then the AI reports that Terran's identification pass was taken. The AI believes that Oleander and Kay were subjected to the same infection, which later led to mutation. Only in Oleander's case, the symbiosis was complete. If the AI had obtained a skin sample from the beast, it would have tried to help Kay fight the changes happening to him. The AI believes that death is now part of his life cycle. And if Kay wants to change, he will have to sacrifice this body. Three years ago, he killed Oleander, but somehow his body was recreated. It is quite possible that Kay will also be able to return in a new body after the death of this one. But Kay refuses to kill himself because of new tracks that supposedly belong to Oleander. In the morning, the man goes hunting, but upon seeing the creature, he cannot bring himself to shoot it. At night, Kay sets a trap near the ship, hoping that the monster monster will come by itself, and seeing a suitable creature approaching, he kills it. Immediately, from afar, a terrible roar is heard. Later, Kay and the AI analyze the samples obtained and conclude that the monster of this planet recreates deceased offspring. After the death of the first sample, the monster constantly clones new, increasingly mutated humans, better adapted to life on this planet. The AI suggests watching the recording of the night when Terran died. It turns out, that night, Oleander and the first body of Kay died, not the girl. At that time, Oleander insisted that they find and destroy a certain heart, so that's exactly what they need to do. The next day, Kay modifies the AI, taking a levitator from an old probe, which allows it to move and show the direction where the girl went. Kay and the AI set off and soon reach the cave, where they detect strong electromagnetic radiation. But as the drone's screen lights up, a monster jumps out of the depths and attacks Kay. The man has to sacrifice an arm, and while the the monster clutches it. Kay reaches for an axe and kills the creature. Then, Kay goes deeper into the cave and finds the shimmering bodies of Oleander and himself. He frees Oleander's body from its agony, thus breaking its symbiosis with the monster, but he cannot do the same with himself. Then, he sees his prosthesis, once made for him by Hatch, and takes that with him. He and the AI follow the tracks and soon find the spot from where Terran's rescue capsule launched, so the girl survives. He examines his prosthesis and finds an impulse grenade hidden in it. Then, rescue capsules begin to fall from the sky, launched from the same place three years ago. It seems they were shot down, as he has seen them hanging in the sky all these years. But 
How is this possible? Then, the AI reveals data on the program of a new prison meant to be the prototype of the future prison. Scientists learned to stretch time and proposed creating an institution where time would flow faster than in the outer world. This would allow for long-term correction of prisoners in a matter of seconds. At this time, a ship lands on the planet, and Hatch and his assistant disembark. He explains that he was in orbit for just a couple of minutes when he received Kay's message and descended after him. Judging by the speed of transmission, there is a time difference measured in years. While Kay spent three years learning to breathe the local air, only 20 minutes passed for Hatch, and now he wants the information Kay stole for him at the beginning of the film. But Kay refuses to hand over the data, and Hatch strikes him. The man regains consciousness, only to hear Hatch's voice, lamenting his stubbornness. However, he has one weakness he can exploit, and Hatch shows Terran tied up. But Kay has already seen the true nature of Hatch, who is not stopped by the the blood of the innocent and refuses to share the information. But after threats to kill the girl, Kay admits that all the data is stored in the research probe outside the ship. Hatch goes for the data, ordering his assistant to deal with the couple. The man pulls off the girl's breathing mask. In anger, Kay's body begins to mutate. Meanwhile, Hatch finds the probe, presses the data transfer button, and remotely activates the bomb in Kay's shuttle. Suddenly, the transfer stops. Hatch leans over to see what's wrong and gets an explosion in the face. Kay transforms into a monster, kills Hatch's assistant, and approaches Terran. The AI calls out to Kay, asking him to come outside. The beast breaks out of the ship. Terran starts talking to him, reminding him that he is human and can control himself. The man calms down and returns to his human form. But then, injured but alive, Hatch appears from behind a hill. He is convinced that this place should not fall into others' hands and shoots at Kay. However, Kay's body absorbs the bullets and a tentacle emerges from his back and kills the enemy. Terran is frightened but sees that Kay Kay is aware of what he is doing. Later, seizing the broken but functional AI, the couple heads to Hatch's shuttle, as they now have to become survivors, not only for Kay's father, but also for all those in need. This is where the movie ends.